Yes, if you are still listening, now this is the biggest part of the episode, the debate section. So thank you to you lot who sent this in. And this one was not sent in by one of you lot, so I don't even know why I'm thanking you. This was an idea that's been brewing for quite a while, and I'm buzzing for this. It's outside of the top six best 11. And traditional. Mi- traditional, six, yeah, because traditional top six. So there's no Spurs, there's no Arsenal, Man United, Man City, Chelsea... Liverpool. Liverpool. How did I nearly forget Liverpool? <laughs> Great intro to the last yeah. part. Of You've got the weirdest order. For I the did. Top I six. did think that. Then I was thinking, <laughs> why am I doing? And I, I, I had to go with it. As soon as I started, it, you I can even like, question why Arsenal was first in the top six. Yeah, I know. And the, fa- <laughs> the fact I went in with them first, I was like, oh no. I, I was itchy. I was thinking, I can get to five. Who on earth is that six? But anyway, <laughs> outside the top six, best eleven. We are gonna. We're going to do this. This is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited for this. I don't know how many of us we haven't discussed our teams, nope. so we could. This could be a really boring part, and we both go the same eleven. But I doubt it for a second. I'd be shocked. Four, three, three. <laughs> Let's get into it. Sai, who is your goalkeeper? So I've got for a goalkeeper who I've not even mentioned in episodes on the pod, but I, I just keep forgetting about him. But I think it's because he's just so good, so consistent. We just forget about this Premier League winner. Casper Schmeichel. Oh, not Casper Schmeichel. Casper Schmeichel. Oh, I, I cannot. How can you that. have a go? No, no. Why are you in a bad mood about Casper Schmeichel? I don't think he's very good. I, I honestly don't good. think he's good enough. I think his shot stopping is great. I think his distribution is poor. No, very poor. No, I disagree. I'm still not a fan of him. I think he gets away with a lot of things because he's known as a Premier League winner. I think Casper Schmeichel is criminally overrated. I'm not a fan of Casper. I, do you know what? <laughs> I've said it before on this podcast. I'm not, I don't. I don't like him as a key. I don't think do he's good know? enough. No, I, I think. I mean, I, it's, it's interesting because you asked me this question six weeks ago. Of course, I was going to say Jose Sar, but that's what I've already heard about Wolves. I've just I'm fed up with Wolves, so I don't want to put Wolves keeper in. I think Cashmere Michael's a good keeper, but I think I, he's a top keeper. I don't think he's. I don't think he's great. I think he's very. He's, I think the bar, I think he a lot of corners really takes some crosses really well. I think he's good, good kicker, great shot stopper, commanding. Um, the favourite word, leadership. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's great in the leadership FC and too. Great looking. He's a good looking lad, but I don't, I just personally, I, I'm not a fan of Cashmere Michael. When I watch him, he doesn't instill me with confidence. Really? No, never. I always find so him quite I shaky. He, I think he's quite relaxed. See, I watch him and I think he, he, makes, he makes some good saves, a lot of like highlight saves where he yeah. really dies for it, mates. But it's just a lot of, a lot of, he has a lot of clangers in him. In my, in my opinion, personally, when I watch him, I don't, I don't, I just don't like it. I don't know where it's his style of goalkeeper because yeah. he does a lot of things quite like, like he's catching and things like that. Oh, the the, the, the Danish, Danish catch is Danish, fantastic to watch. Though, it's great it? to watch. But again, I don't know if that's just me, just me not being a keeper. Because yeah. obviously, you're probably better at talking about this as a keeper. I think so. But I don't trust him when I when I watch him play. I'd have four favorite Casper if it was my goal. Four faith. Jeez, okay, this is this is really weird now. So my goalkeeper, it shows I saw. <laughs> and I said earlier on in the, the season I preferred Martinez, but I think now I've it's been long enough now. Yeah. Even though it probably was only about six weeks ago. But he stayed at that level. I think Wolves have dipped, yeah. but I still think he's been good enough. I still and oh, yeah. he is so commanding and I didn't realize how big he was. Like a couple of times he's jumped up to to catch the ball. And he's fully stretched. Yeah, he is so dominating. He's great distribution. Correct. I can't believe I'm telling you how good Jose Sar <laughs> is as a Wolves fan. But I love everything about him. I think he's everything. Yeah. Jose Sar is everything a modern caper. Caper. caper? <laughs> 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 try again. Jose Sar is is definitely everything a modern keeper should be. Yeah, distribution massive for me. You know me. Of course. Shot stopping and Stop. his confidence because. Yeah, yeah. It's all good being good dis- with the distribution, but coming out and commanding your box yeah. for me is, is huge. And a great beard. Yeah, and he's got a great beard. He's a good keeper. I really like yeah. him. And for me, he, it's the consistency now. I thought at the start, okay, could this just be... Yeah. And then now we've seen it throughout the season, he just kept on staying at that high level and he's kept you in a lot of a lot of games. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. He keeps the goals away, obviously, as a keeper. That's a really obvious thing to say. But- so I was top draw. The, I said the only reason I put him is because I'm just a bit fed up with Wolves the past few weeks. Yeah, it makes sense. It's probably not. It's probably a bit harsh on Sar really. He has given away a fair, few, I think three or four pounds this year. Yeah, from yeah. being too confident sometimes. Yeah, which he will learn. Um, so yeah, Jonas Sar. You know, I think bu- if you asked me a few weeks ago, I'd have completely said that him straight away. Yeah, but I just, yeah, I'm not. I'm, I was going to about to say yeah, good, both good picks, but. 
I won't say that because I don't believe it. I don't, <laughs> I don't mean it. So, okay, then I'll, let's go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jeez, what on earth was that? Hop over. Jeez, I've not even drank. I'm drinking water. <laughs> let's hop over to the right back. Right Who back, uh, Kieran Trippier. Yes. Absolutely. Kieran First Trippier. one we've locked in together. Kieran T- Trippier. Oh, my word. <laughs> what is going on? Kieran Trippier, what a boy. What a player. And Top player. And he's part of Leadership FC now. I've heard of so course. much about the fact that Kieran Trippier is still injured and you're hearing all these players yeah. saying how much he's still doing in the dressing room now when he's injured. And he was a great player. We all know he's a great player. Top, like, top player. Dead ball situation's great. Defensively great. He's just consistent as well. That's the thing. I think he's a he's not a, a player that's like a world beater. I don't think he's in the discussion with the likes of Reese James. He's not Trent. world class, but you know exactly what you get from him. He's an 8 out of 10 every week. Yeah. He, that's, a, that's a difference. Yeah. His biggest weakness... Is that he's small? Yeah, and that's, the, that's literally, and that's not his fault. Yeah, and he kind of, I, I just like him as a player. I think yeah. he's very, very neat on the ball, tidy player. So Kieran Trippier has definitely got to be outside the top six, Absolutely. best right back. I don't think it's a discussion. He should really. be in the top six, should he? Yeah, high, really. High, 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 Atletico Madrid for you know for half a season. But if Newcastle came knocking on my door with that amount of cash, I'd be going straight away as well. So you can only respect it. Yeah. And, you can hustle. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a hustle. That's a, <laughs> okay. Then two centre backs. Do you want to go straight in with both of them? Yeah, go on. Have you? So my two, <laughs> you're gonna. Uh, this is now where my first ones. I think now this is gonna cause a little <laughs> <Right>. bit. <laughs> so my, in my opinion, the two best centre backs outside of the top six in my start eleven, Johnny Evans, and. Uh, <laughs> Mohamed Salisa oh my word why am I I'm bad do not say Salisa Salisa yeah 100% <laughs> no, just hear me out Salisa <gasps> I think Salisa has dropped off in form recently oh my god but I absolutely love him and I know he's had a little dip in form recently and he's had a few clangers a few he's a for a game nah, that's, only, that's real recency oh, bias though I think he's awful I think Salisa has been a very good player all season I think, no he's not I think earlier on in the season he was amazing no. he was in the discussion oh, potentially no. I've knocked on that top 5 centre backs in the league discussion Sam, that I really mean it you're drinking water you're not speaking sense have a beer to speak sense <laughs> that is an awful decision can, can you imagine as a, outside the top six best two Johnny Evans and Salisu I think he's a good shout I thought Johnny Evans but I think he's two years too late now I still think he's so class now oh, he's still and good Salisu I think he's a great player I really like him it, it, yes he's had a dip recently it's a, it's a, it's a dip but he's been so good earlier on in the season been. Okay, do you go in your two then? Because I could talk about Salisa all day. Because okay. what I love about him is he's fast, he's <laughs> brave, he's confident on the ball, and he's a commanding player, and he wins everything in the air. He's strong. He's I, so pro to an error. So pro to an error. No, but I think that's that's not him. I think a lot of it is down to Southampton's dip in form as a squad. They've had such a massive dip in form, and that's coincided with his dip in form. But the whole squad's looked poor recently. Anyway... Oh, you can't okay I, knew, I told you off camera there's a oh. couple I can tell you're not going to be happy with okay your two centre backs I've gone for Zuma and Anderson at Palace Anderson I was, was mo- the one I nearly I was this so close I was him. really impressed with Anderson at Fulham last year thought he was top top draw I really wanted Wolves to go for him I, I was gutted he went to Palace I think he's really classy defender he's also Makes his partner look better, whoever he plays with. Yeah. Makes his partner far better. Not enough said for Anderson. It's just, it's not, it's not enough stylish. Yeah. It's just a good, good player. Honestly, well, Anderson's passing ability as well. Yeah. Some of those long balls he does, the way he, his passing is, is, is class. Yeah. He's had a few assists from just pure. Probably and it's not, yeah. even, it's not even a hoof. You can see what he's doing. Yeah. With he's, he's, picked, he's picked the ball out. He's oh, he's, ball he's out, a great player. I really like him. So, again, consistent. Just, yeah. I like him a lot. I think the four centre backs we picked there yeah. are great. Kurt Zuma again, he, he's fast, powerful. Um, he's had incidents with cats, we know. We'll, we'll just go over that. that. Yep. <laughs> um, but I, dominant centre half, you know, could have easily stayed at Chelsea. Could have easily stayed at Chelsea. So not, again, he doesn't instill me with confidence as a player. Does he not? I think he, he's. I know I, can, I know I can't talk with Salisu as a shout, but I think he's prone to an error as well as Zuma is. But at least when his I watch, pace gets him out of it as well. Yeah. I whereas like I, when I watch, I'm, and I he scores mean, goals. Yeah, he does. And when I watch Salisu, I don't mean to bring it to Salisu, is I can see what he's trying to do, and I can I can see sometimes if he was in a better team, I think Salisu yeah. would flourish as a player because he's so good on the ball. Whereas <laughs> Zuma, he doesn't instill me confidence with his passing ability and things like that. Okay. It's just a bit, it's a little bit all over the place for me personally with Zuma and positionally quite a lot of the time. His pace gets him out of situations, but 
if he wasn't in a poor position in the first place, he'd have just swept it up instantly. Personally, but yeah, okay. I think enough. four great centre backs. Uh, three <laughs> mediocre left back. Then who are you going for? Uh, Dinia. Yes, has to be. Okay, we've got two, two, two four back. The four yeah, backs are the same. Yeah, Luca Dinia. I don't think there's even much we need to say about him. Baller. He's a great player. Luca Dinia is probably one of the best signings of the January transfer window. The fact that Everton yeah. got rid of him was just m- insane. A Rafa masterclass. Sell oh. Dinia. Three years later, get sacked. I know. Gosh. And not only that, I think he. Luke Dinia's ball like his dead ball situations I yeah. think he's so so good and integral to this Villa side I know I've had dipped in form and yeah. not been great recently but he's a great player and I he, think he always will be he always, always, will, will, be. always will be he won't always will be but I know what you're saying you know what you're getting from him very good very stylish plays for France regularly for a reason um, you look at how good France's squad is yeah top top player yeah definitely I think 25 mil I would say it's a bargain but it's a top top buy yeah, he's a great player. He's a great player. Just yeah, he's yeah. he's just so good going forward. Yeah. Oh, I love him. He's a great player. It annoys me that he's at the villa, to be honest. <laughs> Tell me about it. Okay, then have we both gone for a three midfielder? Have you got yes. like a holding midfielder and then two? Um, I think this might be It's probably Do you know what? I feel like we could we could be very close. I've actually this. got, you know, just the three best centre mids. Okay. But you, you could say all okay. three. Just, could you, hold you go with all three. Okay. Just say yours quickly and then I think mine are probably the obvious ones as well. Oh, I don't know if we, this is why I'm worried now that we have so, the same. Declan Rice. Yep. Okay. Ruben Neves. Obviously. I haven't got Ruben Neves. And Tielemans. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, we've got one the same. Only one? Okay. Who you got? So I've got Basuma as a holder midfielder. Yeah. I love Basuma, and I yeah. still think he's being held back by Brighton. He needs to go yeah, to a top right. six side. He was very good the weekend. Oh, he's such a good player. And I watched him, I think it was against Chelsea earlier on in the season when they got a draw. Yeah. Basuma ran the midfield. He he taught Jorginho how to pass in that game, and he, he just he takes a ball in situations, and you think he's got that side of his game isn't talked about enough. The way he controls play and he sets the tempo for the game. Everyone knows as a destroyer, yeah. and he does that. But he, yeah. he also he sets the, he sets the pace for the yeah, entire game. Basuma is amazing. I say it's very good the weekend. Scored his goal. He has a lot of suspensions. This is an issue. Yeah, he's the reason why I wouldn't say he's top class. But do you? But worry? he is nearing that all the time. He, if he went to a better team than Brighton. He would go, he move forwards like indeed he did. Went to Leicester, indeed is brilliant. Yeah, you know he could be that same kind of a maybe for better Basuma. Yeah, indeed he, for me, him it was him or Basuma, but I personally just prefer. That's just a personal pref- a yeah. preference on um, on uh, Basuma. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, and then Declan Rice. By the way, I completely agree. That Bob was my, class. Yeah. So mine again, Neves and Tielemans are good players. They were close. Yeah. James Ward Prowse. I don't think he's good as Neves or Tielemans. But I can understand the choice. I think I think arguably he is just for the, the, what he does. He single handedly carries a team. But I think that's because going forward, he is. How do I word this? He's very good for Southampton because of what I think Southampton actually quite a poor side for me, really honest. And I think if he was in a better side, Ward Prowse would go missing, but it would be as influential. I don't know. I think. I think Romeo, by the way, as well, nearly got a shout. That's an honourable mention to Romeo. Uh, a great holding yeah, midfielder. I, yeah. re- I love you him. You like him, don't you? I'm obsessed. But um, I mean, I thought about Jabotini, yeah, obviously. Obviously. Hey, again, another, there was, I think Sentiments was the yeah. hardest one for me. There were so many I could pick That's from. That's why I went 4 3 3 rather than 4 4 2. Same here. 3 4 3. Because so I wanted 3 Sentiments. The pool of players. But I, I just think with James Will Prowse. You can also Suchek as well. Oh, yeah, Suchek. I love Suchek. Another one, I yeah. love him. I think he's brilliant. I really do. I like him as well. But I just. James Will Prowse for me. I used to think oh, he was just a free kick specialist, but I've watched a lot of Southampton recently, hence the, hence the uh, Salisu shout. But um, I think what James Ward Prowse is so good at, again, it's the tempo. Yeah. He moves the ball so fast and constantly just makes the right decision. He does so many little simple things, moves the ball on to players. And, it, and when you watch him, and if you just literally just single handedly just stare at him the entire game, yeah. you see the effect he has on the game. And he, he he's he is a bit of a destroyer as well. He has got that side. Yeah, he's got a tackle. Really. James Will Prowse break, breaks a play, scores goals, assists, yeah. and just sets a tempo for games. Overall, I think he's a great centre mid, and I, I can see why arguably Neves and uh, Tielemans are probably better on the eye as yeah. players. But I just think as a whole, James Will Prowse is a great player. So I think as a team, that might be for three wouldn't work as a team. Because they're, they're quite similar. Oh, but we're not doing it. We're, we're, we're not, we doing we're not actually well, ever. Yeah, exactly. If I was making a team up a bit different. Exactly. Yeah, but, but we could get really boring with tactics then. Well, we, we could. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could understand the more approach choice, but he's nowhere near Declan Rice 
I don't think he's near Neves. Oh, he's not near. He's not near Declan Rice. That's why Declan Rice is my captain. Skipper, oh yeah, he's my skipper. He's my skipper. <laughs> I never thought I was skipper. Oh, I just said that off the top of my head. That okay. wasn't planned. <laughs> I haven't written like a bracket C okay. next to him or anything. But no, I think as midfield go, I think yeah, we know enough. your opinions on Neves. He's a great player. Top draw. Tielemans looks like he probably is going to a top six side. As he should. Because I, think I just think he's, he's not had a great season this season. I think Leicester had a great season. Yeah, and I think it hasn't helped all this contract but, negotiations. But also, they are getting better. So oh yeah, they're climbing up now at the end. They're sneaking up all of a sudden, and they are getting better. I think, but I think Vardy for most of the season has really affected it, uh, Leicester. I think Ian Acho is finally stepping up. He hasn't scored enough goals. But I like he's it. scored nowhere near the goals that Vardy would score. Yeah, no, I get that, but I think Ian actually starting. He's now actually finally got a run of games, and he's looking like a good player. I think Ian Acho wasn't far out of this for me. Yeah. I really like. Really? Play. He holds up the ball well. And I don't think Leicester have been good. I don't think that's helped him. I think we're now starting yeah. to see the Inacho that we all thought could be there. He's a so great I think player. Brendan Rodgers wanted Dakar to be the main striker. He's yeah. desperate for Dakar to do yeah, that. Yeah. Didn't do, he, he just hasn't done it. He scored those four goals in the one game in the Europa or the conference. Where he has was. moments, doesn't he? He's a bit of a moments player where. But he's just. I don't. His pace motion. Yeah, I've not seen enough of him personally. But I can't, that, I'm not saying he's a pace much. As in, I've seen parts of him. Yeah. And I've seen moments where I think, okay, this guy's serious. It could be something, yeah. But then I haven't seen it enough. It him. was like, remember the lesser side? Was it um, Musa, the striker? Oh, Ahmed and, Musa. And he was to be unbelievable with FIFA as well. <laughs> top draw. I can't believe he did, you're bringing he FIFA did, though, into this he, podcast. Don't forget, he yes, was. he was, but... But like he's, he bad goals in a whatever, just, whatever club he was at before. It's just the fact that we've gone to sorry, a player yeah. and we've because that people are now going to think that's right. He just from, you know? No, I know what you're saying, but you know what these keyboard warriors are going to be like. Si only knows his opinion from FIFA, and they oh. sort of. We don't play FIFA anymore. I don't, I've not, not played FIFA since what for years. I haven't played <laughs> it for a few weeks, to be fair. A few weeks. <laughs> yeah, I had a little bit of a phase. I was a bit bored, but I, I can't stand the game. But anyway, we're not talking about FIFA. We're yeah, talking so about, move on. Uh, yeah, so I think. Three midfielders. I think solid. Yeah, from both of us. Okay. I think we'll go one position at a time. Right winger, okay. I hope we agree on this. Rafinha. Oh, Jared Bowen for me. He's my left. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> so it's fine. Okay, at least we got we both got Jared Bowen's Bowen. Bowen's gotta be in. Got to be in. Gotta be in the English squad next squad. He is top draw for West Ham, scores all the goals. Since Antonio dropped off scoring the goals, Bowen stepped up. Energy. So good. When he hit the bar the other day with the overhead kick, I know. I, 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 I almost celebrated feel for him but was until I realised that was actually a goal. But the, the pure skill to do that. Yeah. What a player. When I watched what a lot, player. I watched a lot of him obviously in the championship when he yeah. was at Hull. And he single handedly carried Hull that one season. And then everyone said, Okay, it might be a one season wonder. He did it again the next season yeah. and then it was a thing, can he really step up? And honestly, from what I've seen, he is now he's clear of what he did at Hull yeah. he's carrying West Ham more than he did at Hull in my opinion reckon, yeah. Jared Bowen he gets, easily, the goals, he gets the goals for Jared him. Bowen carry, carries West Ham definitely more than yeah. Hull than he did at Hull honestly I truly believe what he does now he's the main man and whenever anyone seems to doubt him or even myself has a little bit yeah. of doubt in my mind he steps up every single week he's in really week good. out he's, he might go he'll be quiet for 70 minutes but you know he's got a goal in him and you, we've seen it it's, it's the single moments if he can get one on one with a player Near the box, you know he's scoring, yeah. and that's why. He... The game against Frankfurt on Thursday, Bowen I mean, has to have a good game. Has to for West Ham to have a good good chance. Oh yeah, definitely. That's going to be a cracker. Oh yeah, the first game was top draw to watch as well. Great game of football. I watched the Rangers game. I oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, good good game that was. So that was one, one nil. Yes, yes. Yeah. Whereas a two was a Frankfurt, but. Great game, it really was. Yeah, I'm buzzing to watch them, them and the Champions League. But yeah, I think I'm glad we both got back Bowen. Oh, yeah. Finia, I can see why you've said him. He's bored. Again, yeah. absolute bored. Plays in Brazil for a reason. Um, he's the one true star of the Leeds team, I think. Yeah. Um, he stands out. There's a reason why as well. He, he was meant to draw by Munich in January. By I mean, then pulled out, granted, but he is. Oh, he's a great player. He's, he's so good. I've gone for somebody who is a very similar player in okay. the way they play. Sam Maximan. I, I think <sighs> both of them tricky players. No, I, I don't understand this hype over someone who does 16 step overs and goes nowhere. See, I think so. Doesn't score, doesn't assist. I think it's a waste of time. Honestly. It's another try away. <laughs> waste of time. I really like Sam Maximan I think he's a really good player I think he's the problem is watch yeah, but he's isolated quite often 
That's the thing. I, I think at just, Newcastle he gets isolated. I just, just see a double try all right, and I just get frustrated straight away. I can see the argument, but see, I, I don't see football as a, a game of uh, stats. I'll, it's all with the eye. That's the thing. That's the <laughs> <laughs> I bet you think Grealish has been a good side as well, don't you? I don't actually think he's been that bad. To be oh, fair. flop. Flop City. Grealish hasn't been a I don't think Grealish flop has been City. a flop. He hasn't been a flop. 100 mil for two goals, two assists. For it's a not, forward. But he's not just that. It is he's that. impacting Look, games. He's not, though. He is. I think he's actually starting to... From the to, bench? He's starting to... From the st- bench? When Atletico Madrid are pulling his air? <laughs> Honestly. I think he's now starting to affect the game. You're starting a forward for 100 mil. But he's got two this goals. This is the pep way. It's not about oh, goal contributions. Not. He has to score more that's, that's for why, 100 mil. To be fair, that's why the podcast is Book Out Sam Talks Ball. That's the problem. I'm just oh. talking knowledge here. Do you know what? <laughs> I, I, I can't wait this isn't even about Greenish but it's just okay. <laughs> Sam Maximan so, carry on Sam Maximan I, I really like him I do think though if, in a better side he would flourish so much there's yeah. a reason why he was linked with Liverpool and clubs like that I think he's just a great player I really really like him and he's just isolated at times and I think he, the reason why I like him is similar to Rafinha he just gets you up off your feet I get excited to watch Sam Maximan and when I say uh, yeah. these are the best players I think technically it's just, I've never seen a play, some of the things he does with the ball and yes well, I know yeah. that, like, he does the 16 step overs for no reason but I'm all for it I absolutely love that kind of stuff it, it, it's just great to watch it's it, kind of hard it's real it's entertainment and, yeah when you're watching that game it's great to watch for me you know I sort of bring it back to the Darwin Troy situation like I just to like Wolves fans I was going to, into the ground and everything people say oh why has Darwin Troy not started when he was on the club he gets me off the seat I really like watching him I'm just like but He's great to watch until he puts a cross in or tries to score. Yeah, I think it might and be a I, neutral I, thing then. I maybe. like, you know, I just like goals all the time as much as I can. If you're wait, if you're, I don't care if you're doing something really fancy beforehand. If you then waste it, it doesn't create a chance, it doesn't create a score opportunity or, or goal. Why is he told? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's is it entertaining to watch some amount from a neutral I understand that point of view it's not, but the, the, I just I love watching football like I, I, to be honest unless it's West yeah. Brom or Lie Town <laughs> I'm, joking, I'm, joking, I'm gonna keep it up unless it's unless it's West Brom obviously I, I don't actually care about the score ever of a game I just want to I want to be entertained and I want to watch yeah. football and I love watching but there's nothing better than watching as much as goals are great I love just watching players run and dribble with the ball and that's why the Ronaldinho thing and players yeah, like that okay. if they just it's entertaining to watch and I, I think more. This might be controversial, and we'll say this. And we'll see what people think. I prefer to watch somebody who just bags twenty goals, like simple tap-ins. I could watch over that. I prefer to watch somebody who can keep up, getting me off the seat, getting excited. Yeah. Obviously, we've never had either at West Brom, so it's probably that's the reason why. Because <laughs> I've just never had either. So, but yeah, I think it's an interesting debate. I, I can see your points about Sam. So you'd rather like a Lee Trundle, or a him Swansea, the stray boater. I'm gonna pretend I know that is now. I don't remember oh, that. Is, are you too young for that? <laughs> Maybe I probably oh, am. He was it's a stray boater. He was stray boater the football. He was like JJ Okocha. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. We go JJ Okocha. You rather JJ Okocha to like a Defoe in their primes? To watch, yeah. At my club, if I was watching them, yeah. But if you if you look up to what's the buy one of those players, yeah, I'd want. JJ Kocha just okay. purely because I want to be entertained okay. but by the end of the day as much as obviously I want my team to win yeah. I think I'm realistic to know West Brom they don't win and I've got, I've learned that the hard yeah. way we're not we've never re, we've never in my lifetime we've never pushed for Europe <laughs> or anything like that I just want to be entertained oh, you finished eighth, was, didn't you? yeah exactly <laughs> but the, the, the football was great at that time and I, I was entertained Yeah, that's what I want I want to see good football okay. and that's why I love watching Pep's football but just, you just, think be entertained. just winning is entertaining no, because I had Pulis winning every week, 1 0 for about three. Oh, it's the reason no. why I got rid of my West Brom ticket. I love the art of defending, though, as well. I do, you know? but Pulis, you, it's not. I don't mind it. So if you're defending, like, you're, you, you, you bust your teeth and it's a bit nervy. But when you win, the relief, that feeling of. Do you know what? I would I love, love to. That. It'd be really interesting if you'd have watched Pulis ball for a year and a half to see if yeah. you really believe that. Going away to Everton yeah. and getting a 0 0 draw without having a shot on target. And you just think, what is the point in this? <laughs> Ten players behind the ball, it's just not good. But our strikers, we'll quickly reel them off. We're coming to the end of the podcast. Let's get the quick, the, quickly to the two strikers. Um, I found this really tricky. Really difficult. I had three calls. Do you want to number three calls? Go what I thought it. it was going to be? So between Tony, Watkins and Antonio. If you ask me at the start of the season, it would have been Antonio because he was bagging. I don't rate Antonio. Antonio cannot finish he his is. dinner. I don't rate Antonio as a striker. He's fallen off, but he's, I think he still does a lot for West Ham. Oh, he does a lot, but I, play. I don't like him as a striker. But that's the reason why I think we're not going to have him. Yeah. So he reads between Tony and Watkins and... 
I kind of a bit of player, so it's got to be Tony. I agree with you then, Antonio. I'm glad you didn't say Watkins because Watkins and Antonio are both similar in the sense that they both can't, like, they can't finish. They actual yeah. shooting and they claim a lot of Villa fans still say Watkins is a left winger yeah. rather than a striker. Yeah, but Pretend. you paid thirty mil for a striker. Exactly. You'd hope for a little bit more. Well, yeah. I think overall our teams are pretty good there. I mean, Tony's scored a lot of goals. Oh, he's a great player. He's scored a lot of penalties, granted, but he does a lot for Brentford. Definitely, definitely. Good, good player. Okay, then, so now we're going to quickly reel off our outside of the top six best 11. So I'm going to go straight in. I'm going to go bold go and say mine. Okay. Hit me. So here is my outside of the top six best 11. And I believe this. I'm saying it with chest. In goal, Jose Sarr. Trippier right back. Johnny Evans and Mohamed Salisu as centre-backs. Luca Dina left back. James Ward-Prowse, Declan Rice and Basuma as my midfield. And then a front three of St. Maximan, Ivan Tony, and Jared Bowen. Bold facts. Who is your outside of the top six best 11? My outside top six best 11 is keeper Schmeichel. Then you've got back four Trippier, Zuma, Anderson, Dina. Before three, Declan Rice, Ruben Neves, and Tielemans. Uh, front three, Rafinha, Ivan Tony, and Jared Bowen. That, top, that's, that team is getting at least top four. <laughs> Sorry, that came from absolutely nowhere. Do you know what, actually? I'll have, I'm going to listen back to this and have a real think about that question because that could be a good question yeah. but let us know guys in the comment section below who has got a better team thank you again Cy for coming on thank Good you to Surprise me. Shirts as well for sponsoring the podcast and thank you to The Art of Football for sending me this lovely book of hat shout out to them and uh, yeah big things coming for the podcast guys hopefully next week we may potentially have four people on for our team of the season but that's a little if you're, if you're still listening you'll know that but I doubt there's many people still here <laughs> but yeah cheers again mate cheers mate up the podcast I don't know what I'm saying because I'm always doing my usual now I don't know why I said up the podcast there I've never said that before I didn't like it so I'm not going to say that again look at Sam over and out baby yeah that's that's it look <laughs> at Sam over and out baby <laughs>